while Charles Taylor, in his philosophical uh, writings on morality, has not shown a great deal of interest in adolescence or emerging adulthood and the internet, he does offer some useful language and ways of thinking about the moral terrain of our cyber worlds. He asks, who am I? And he answers, to know who you are is to be oriented in moral space. A space in which questions arise about what is good and bad, what is worth doing and what not, what has meaning and importance to you. He continues, moral orientation has two aspects. There are two ways that we can fail to have it. I can be ignorant of the lie of the land around me, not knowing the important locations which make it up or how they relate to each other. This ignorance will be cured with a good map. But then I can be lost in another way if I don't know how to place myself on this map. I'm especially honored to introduce our speaker for the first annual Tyler Clementi Humanities Lecture, Professor Richard Miller. I'm honored for several reasons. Dr. Miller is not only a distinguished scholar and author of several extraordinary books, As If Learning Mattered, Reforming Higher Education, and Writing at the End of the World. In these works, in his teaching, and especially more recently in his impressive use of multimedia, he has engaged public culture and imagined new spaces, internet spaces, for serious public intellectual and transdisciplinary engagements. In short, he has changed the ways we think about writing at universities and beyond. Most important, Professor Miller has challenged us to examine the moral spaces of communicating, disseminating, and viewing, and the connections among them. And by addressing these essential questions about radically different and new moral spaces, one's not imagined by Charles Taylor as he wrote those words long before the age of the internet, uh, internet began to leave its mark. Dr. Miller has, with the skill of a veteran ethnographer and rhetorician, uh, cultural theorist and critic, narrated the events surrounding Tyler's death with immediacy and understanding and by making crucial connections. You will find on his website, where he now publishes exclusively, multimedia engagements on topics of immediate concern to the Tyler Clementi Center, especially in his discussions of, uh, the end of pri on the end of privacy and how education has changed as a result of the proliferation of handheld devices that enable instant publication and global distribution of anything that can be seen or heard. It could be argued that Tyler's story has been narrated here at Rutgers um, most effectively by Dr. Miller. I don't agree with everything he has to say, but that's why we have universities, and you'll have to listen for yourself. Some of you may be asking, why, why is our first Tyler Clementi Center lecture presented by a professor of English, grounded in the humanities? I have a very complex answer to that question, but I will only give you the headlines. Um, too often, centers and institutes have short lives for many reasons. First, their missions are narrow and often indexed to a single social problem. Two, uh, they come and go into existence based on funding streams and priorities, where sometimes they're short-lived because communally we share sympathy and outrage, and often institutes come and go 
because they serve certain intellectual fashions. If one were to study the vicissitudes of centers and institutes and look into those with longevity and significance, I think you'd find that the enduring ones ask the important questions. They engage broader publics. They're fully transdisciplinary. And by that I mean they involve the arts, the humanities, and the sciences. In short, if we, are, if we ask simple questions, we will often get simple answers, often equally, uh, often leading to technocratic solutions. Finally, I know Tyler only from <coughs> images and stories about him. One thing that I have come to know with some measure of certainty from his family and others is that he had a passion for the arts, especially music. I somehow imagine that Tyler would approve of honoring him with today's lecture. Now I've noticed uh, uh, some people coming in late that I want to acknowledge and then I'm uh, going to uh, invite Dr. Miller. Two of our trustees have arrived, uh, James Doggery and soon to be appointed trustee Kate Sweeney. Uh, where are we going back? There's back of the room, James and Kate Doggery. Um, and I, I have to thank a couple of people very quickly to Kaisley Cohn, who's standing at the door, who's helped make this a very special event. And um, so, Dr. Miller.